Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm just out on my daily exercise. I'm going down a footpath on the other side of Chalmers and Giles. I've been for a big long walk around from Chalmers and Peter. This road here, I'm just coming out onto, is Mill Lane, which um, we have been down before when I did my River Misborn series. We had a look at the Ford, but today we don't need to go to the Ford to find water on Mill Lane. Have a look at this. There's water coming out of these gates. This appears to be some sort of waterworks and the water is pouring out of here. Um, so the Midbourne really is quite full, well overflowing as you can see. I'm not entirely sure what that place is but obviously I don't think there's, it's always something to do with water but I think there's supposed to be water pouring out the gates like this and flowing off down Mill Lane. So what we'll do is uh, we'll walk along through here, at least it, all the water looks nice and clean. I'll show you the ford and then we'll walk down to Champs and Giles village centre. We'll have a look at the flood waters there and um, we'll go down the valley to Champs and Peter. I did, I did make a video a couple of weeks ago. I didn't speak in it. I just walked around filming the flooding in Champs and Peter. So do have a look at the link on screen now. But have a look at that. The water flows off round the corner. We're going to go, once we've finished with this, to get to Champs and Giles, we're going to walk down that footpath there. So that, that's just under a quarter of a mile away is the village centre. But have a look at this. All this water pouring round here. The, um, the main course of the River Misborn is just the other side. This is the old mill building. There's a course under here which would have been dug for the mill, which doesn't always have water. I, I have a feeling when I did my River Misborn series, there may not have been water in that section, but there certainly is today. The water pouring off round there through the fields. Um, and then as I just get out of the water, we get to here, I can show you the water. So that's the other course of the river. The car just drove through the flood waters. Now they've got to go through the ford. So effectively this is an island. It's completely surrounded by water. There goes the car through the ford. So I'm just going to walk past the ford and then I'm going to head back towards Chalmers and Giles. So have a look at this. This is where there's supposed to be water on Mill Lane. And luckily the bridge is still, um, for those, well, for that, that said, I've got wellies on. If you didn't have wellies on, then you'd have a job to get here, because whichever way you come to here, you've got to walk through water, because there's water coming off on this side as well. And um, we'll just, look at that, it's just pouring out the field there. And it seems to have flooded this bit of the lane. And if we have a look into the field, looking towards Amersham, that is not normally a field full of water. That's supposed to be a field, but it seems to have become a lake. So, yeah, the River Misborn was almost dried up when I walked um, along it back in May. In fact, it was dried up at one point between Jumps Mead and Jumps and Giles, but it's gone to the complete opposite today. So I'm just going to now head over to Champs and Giles and we'll have a look and see what's going on down there. So here we are in Champs and Giles village centre. This isn't a flood, this is just a village pond. Um, the village itself seems to be okay from the flood water, but as we turn around here, that's where the water flows from the pond through to the River Misborne. Here is the River Misborne, and as you might be able to see, beyond there, all these grassland areas and fields are all a bit waterlogged. So what we're going to do now, we're going to walk through that towards Chapel St Peter and uh, see how we can get on. I'm just going to have to hope it's uh, not too deep. I have got wellies on, um, but that we can get through it. So here we have half closed off bridge, crossing the bridge and we get to here. I literally step off the bridge, feel like a pirate walking the plank into the water. It's fairly shallow. We go across this um, grassland area. We're going to head off in that direction down there. It's not too bad, but um, it's not, unless you've got wellies on, I wouldn't suggest you come walking into this part of Javels and Javels. Have a look at that bench there. Completely surrounded by water. And uh, what I find rather amusing is here, we have a board that says Riverside Path, but the Riverside Path has now quite literally become the river. So we're going to head off round here and it is getting a little bit deep, deeper. You may have seen um, towards the end of last year or was it early this year, I made a video over in Denham called Dangerous Bridges and Floods and um, 
Dutch where the River Colne had flooded and damaged some bridges and uh, we had quite a lot of fun walking through deep flood waters, a bit like this. So here we have the Misbourne flowing off onto the path. And now the path's gone up slightly so it's not too deep here. Compared to back there where it was really quite deep here it's not too bad. I think it's going to get deeper. Yeah, so this, this really, you could almost do this in um, walking boots, but now, yeah, it's getting deeper again. So I really wouldn't suggest you come down here unless you've got wellies. To another um, lone bench, just completely surrounded by water. So the river itself flows just along over there. It's quite a nice place. If you carried a picnic and had it on a, ruck, on a rucksack, you just sit here and know that probably um, you're going to be the only person sitting there, I mind doing that, but I'll come and have lunch here one day. So we get to, you can just see the river along there and you may just be able to see the parish church behind and um, in front, or well on the other side of the river but in front of the parish church, that's the pub garden of the Merlin's Cave pub. If um, we, there wasn't a pandemic on I'd have probably gone and had a pint but um, I'll look forward to that later on in the year hopefully. As we get to just up here, I can see ahead of us there's a bit of a boardwalk, so at least I won't have to worry about walking through floodwaters. I do quite enjoy it, but occasionally there, there could be the odd bit where you don't realise how deep it is and you put your foot in and the water comes over the top of your wellies and you have to walk home with cold, wet feet. But um, that hasn't happened to me yet, thankfully, today. Well, here we are, onto dry land. It's quite funny here. So where there's this boardwalk, the reason there is this boardwalk is this area is usually quite waterlogged anyway, because there's a spring in there and water would flow out into the river. But now, water's flowing the other way. It's flowing from the river back into the spring and then it floods out into the field around there. So here's the end of the pub garden of the um, Merlin's Cave. And there's the parish church. And now it's more how you'd expect it to be, a riverside walk except um, to get to this nice bit of riverside walk you've got to walk through floodwaters. It didn't look too bad this next section. It's all very different though to when I did my Misbourne series and I walked the whole of the River Misbourne. Um, there was water here in Chalfont St Giles but it had dried up between Chalfont St Peter and Chalfont St Giles. Um, there's some springs though upstream of Chalfont St Peter so that kept it flowing. Well it was actually dried up until um, it, it seemed to be flowing around this area at Christmas and then what happened was it would peter out just up there somewhere so a few of the times on my daily walks I'd go and see where the floods, um, or not the floods, where the water ended and even when it snowed at the end of January it wasn't flowing all the way through, it was when the snow melted that the river began to flow all the way through so we get to here that footpath would take you, if you go that way on the other side, no, sorry, if you go this way on the other side of the bridge, down by the churchyard, that takes you back to the village centre. If you go that way, that's one way to Chalfont St Peter. But I'm going to go the waterlogged way, so I'm going to go across here, across these fields, and uh, we'll see what we find further downstream. Well, with the village of Chalfont St Giles behind us, you can just see the church over there. We've come to a slightly higher section of ground, but you can see there's a river flowing along there. Now that's not normally there, which makes me wonder, does this always come up? I remember the last time we had a big flood was in 2001, and I don't think I, I'd have been too young to have gone out on my own. So I remember seeing Chalfont St Peter flooded. I didn't walk up here to Chalfont St Giles. So whether this is quite normal for that course to um, spring up, as I said, in those bushes over there, there is a spring, and I said the water was flowing into the spring, so it looks like it's flown through and all along here and then at this point the footpath becomes waterlogged again so I'm going to walk through it um, and then what I'm going to do I'm going to follow the footpath that heads off down the field in that direction and I have a feeling I'm going to be walking through probably quite a lot of water there is another oh yeah it's really getting deep there is another path which runs more almost parallel to the river although you can't really see a lot of the river because it's in um, in bushes and I walked down there the other day and that was waterlogged all the way along so I thought if I came this way yeah I can see now why it basically goes straight along there I'm going to go along the edge of the field along there so it looks like I'll be above the water level but I think when we get to the end of the field I'm going to have a lot more walking through water to do so let's see what what I find when we get up there 
just come along the footpath a little way. It's been um, quite muddy, but not waterlogged. But now look what happens. Now to start walking through the water again. So I'm going to walk all the way through to the end of this field. It looks like I'm stepping into a river here. Well, technically, yes, I am. Um, but it is supposed to be just a normal public footpath. It's not normally waterlogged like this. So it's probably going to take me a bit longer than it would um, if I was just uh, walking normally. So I'm going to keep walking. And when we get to the end up there, I'll um, show you what we find. Well, that's been fun. I've just been wading my way down the uh, flooded path. We're just coming up to a stile here, uh, which will take us out into the next field. And um, then I'm gonna follow across over the river. There, there is somewhere up there. It's, it's a bit strange this path because there's no real way you can actually get out. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Because whichever way you go, you've got to cross the river and there's no bridge. Now, I know some of the time the river's dried up, so then th that's not really a problem. But when, well, it is pretty deep here. Uh, when the river's not dried up, it can be a bit of a problem, especially if you haven't got wellies on. I mean, I don't actually know if I'm going to get through here. I think I probably will, but it really is. That area there is really deep. My wellies are just about getting me through. Um, excuse me a moment. My, sorry, my microphone wire just got caught on that awful bush. So, we get to here. It says please keep to the footpath, um, which obviously we intend to do, but we might have to um, slightly step off the edge. So I get to this style, wobbly style, surrounded by water. So what I'm going to do, I'll just show you while I'm standing here. If I was to follow the path that way, that takes you, there's a cut of the river, which is also full of water. When you get to the end, there's no way out. And I, I went down there the other day and I couldn't get through the river. I had to climb over a willow tree, which branches just about came onto the other side of the river. It was too deep for me to walk through the river. So I'm gonna head in that direction to where there is a sort of a ford. And I just hope I can get through because if I can't, um, things are gonna be interesting. So I might have to come all the way back and it really will be a pretty long walk. So I'm gonna jump down now, work out how I'm gonna get, um, get through. Well, I think I can actually just, yeah, that's if I st I think if I'd stepped off the edge of the style there, I would have probably gone down not to waist height but um, a fair bit. So I had to step right over to that side, and here we are, I'm back on dry land. So I'm gonna make my way over there to the river and uh, just see what I can find really in this field full of sheep. Well, I've just come over from that style to the actual official river. So back in the um, around Christmas time the water was stopping just in those bushes and then when it snowed it flowed to around there and it petered out around there. Here's this um, extra man-made cut I said about so somehow there must be like a pipe under here the water flows through. Now as for the footpaths one of the official footpaths goes straight across up there and joins the main footpath from Chalfons and Peter to Chalfons and Giles but where we're going we're going to go to where there's a sort of a ford up there whether we're going to get through it or not i don't know the river really meanders here around the field there's a sheep walking off he probably wonders what on earth i'm doing and um, he's running now look so um yeah look at that i've never seen that much water here in the river usually it's just a trickle but it really is quite full here i'm heading to over there you may just be able to see there's some people just there. They're walking along the path towards Chalfonts and Giles. So I'm going to follow quite clearly this path here and I'll see what happens when we get to the forge up there. So I've just come across the field. Even that was a little bit more waterlogged than I'm used to. Now it's here. It's not through this gate, but there's another gate which will take you onto that main footpath from Champs and Peter to Champs and Giles. So this is where I'm hoping I can cross the river because it should be about at its shallowest here. So let's have a look, see how I get on that. That log there, that was across the river like that, which made um, quite a lot of fun to balance your way across the river. Uh, but it's not there now. I think I'll be all right getting across here. It's um, yeah, it's just about not um, too deep. So. I can get through here. So yeah, here we are crossing the River Misbourne, um, a fairly shallow point. Normally the river's so shallow, you can pretty much just walk along the whole river in your wellies, but once you've had a lot of rain, um, it does occasionally fill up. So what I'm gonna do now is walk along this path along here, 
there's a little stile just there by that gate and then I can walk along to Chalfont St Peter and uh, I'll show you what's going on with the river in Chalfont St Peter. And here we are in Chalfont St Peter, just up there is Meal Meadow, the village is not far that way. I thought we'll do this little detour over this footbridge here because as you can see I've got to step into the water again. We've got a few more uh, floods to walk through and um, this isn't too bad because when I walked to St Giles I did come this way. So as we go through here we go around the corner and have a look at that. And we have uh, another what appears to look just like a big pond to walk through and this is where it starts to be, you know, it's starting to cause a few problems. Have a look at the uh, allotments. Um, must, I do feel sorry for the people who've got allotment down here because it means, you know, that it's all underwater. So I've got a way through here. It's not too deep. You know, I can get through here. I do remember back in 2001 when we had uh, the really big floods, you could not get, well, you could get through here, but you'd need proper waders on, you know, ones that come up to sort of here. Uh, you couldn't couldn't have walked through here in Wellies. I just stood in the hole there, went down deeper than I expected it to. So here we are. I'm coming out now of the, the flood water. So leaving the flood water behind, I'm going to take this shortcut down here towards Chalfont St Peter Village Centre. So we're now arriving into the village of Chalfont St Peter. Um, just something I wanted to show you here before we go into the village centre. Have a look at this plaque here that shows how it used to look. Now I did do a video series where I did all these plaques of Chalfont St Peter because there is quite a few of them so do have a look at the link on screen now you'll be able to see that. This bridge though I've always found fascinating. The one we have today is called the Vic Wooten Bridge. He's someone who helped rescue the River Mythborn. But when I was a child, there was a much lower bridge here and water, even when it didn't flood, would frequently flow over the top of this bridge. Now what used to happen here, the river used to go directly that way. But after the floods of 2001, they cut this new cut through there. So it has a straighter route and um, possibly means it's less likely to flood. Because I remember in 2001, we had water flowing all down this path. The residential building that's here today wasn't here, there was an older building, um, it was called Elwood House and it was demolished maybe about 2004-2005 and replaced with this one. It had an identical twin or almost identical twin in Charlton and Giles which was also demolished and replaced. Um, so as we get to here I'll just show you this little bit of river here. So this was um, the pub garden, there used to be picnic tables and swings about where the river is. So the river flew along where the wall is and there used to be a little duck pond much smaller than what we had in Charles and Giles but there was always water even when um, the river dried up there was always some water for the ducks which um, was quite nice so as we cross here is the village car park now under here there's a culvert which takes what's known as the back stream I'll just show you it bubbles out here so that's the Greyhound pub just there you might be able to see water bubbling out there well that is the backstream I did do a video called tributaries of the river Misborn have a look at another link on screen now and uh, you'll be able to see that video where I looked at some of Chalfont St Peter's river Misborn tributaries so um, we are now coming right into the village centre it's uh, starting to get a little bit dark but um, we've almost finished there's Chalfont St Peter Parish Church now this is where things get a little bit more interesting. It's not as bad as it was a few weeks ago, but um, a couple of things to show you. Here is where the river's culverted under the road. Now, when, with really heavy rain, what it's done is it's brought a lot of bigger twigs down. And as you can see, they're stuck under the culvert. So the problem is, if we get a lot more heavy rain, the river flows faster, it's going to bring more twigs down and could potentially block the culvert. This could overflow and uh, we could have a flooded village. But um, a few weeks ago, after the heavy rain we had, see where they've now fenced off the road. That was completely flooded. It looks more like a canal than a river. And it seems to have stopped now, which is good. Um, I actually do quite like it, that said, having the road closed, but it's not good for businesses in Chalfont St Peter. Have a look at what's going on there. Here, where they fenced off the road, there was, unfortunately, there was a sewage pipe 
and water was bubbling out going into the river so effectively meant that the river downstream of Shuffle to Peter was polluted um, but hopefully it will wash itself through and out um, so it has done some damage to the road surface it looks like they have been along and put some new tarmac in that certainly wasn't there the other day and then we have this section here which is um, completely fenced off but one thing I was thinking is um, if we go and have a look at the main precinct car park which um, isn't the prettiest part of Jalfont St Peter I mean it's a bit of a you know you've got this really really nice view here of the parish church and then you turn around and this is what you got the precincts but this is normally full of cars so one thing I thought I think it's quite nice with no cars I mean yes I do agree let's get the road open again but imagine if um because you know you've got another car park literally over there behind the church and you've got Cox car park over there behind Barclays this was closed off and became like a plaza could be a really nice area if you think about it um the river itself would be well let's work this one out the river goes under the street just there so it must be directly beneath my feet would flow across to over there you could effectively undo this section and have the river flowing through here again um, obviously have a road bridge and then this area here could be just like a nice plaza I mean look you've got you've got Costa just there so when the times are normal you could have chairs here and people sitting here the river could be here and um, you could have you know um, a few trees planted a few benches and then the river would disappear under the shops just there come out the other side and there could be a few more trees and benches here it could be a really really pleasant area and um, as I said the other car park is look literally just over there I can even see some cars in it so that's my thoughts I don't know if anyone would agree with me on that um, but you know I think that could make what is the not most attractive part of Chalfont St Peter just seem a little bit nicer anyway um, that's what's going on in Chalfont St Peter a few weeks ago though I was able to get quite a nice uh, reflection of the church um, reflected here so I hope you enjoyed this little video I do hope for the sake of the businesses in Chalfont St Peter though you know as, as interesting as floods are they do stop but I hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching please do feel free to like subscribe and comment and from um, a rather different looking Chalfont St Peter village centre goodbye <laughs>